Dan's question is, what is the tragedy that happened to me in my shop where something like that happened? Here's the tragedy. I, the worst one. There was there's there was many. So I could tell I could tell one story a week for the next year. It goes like this. One night uh, at seven o'clock at night. The reason why I say the time is because the store it closed at eight at night because we had lessons between seven and eight. The store was always dead because no one's really shopping at music stores. That's why a lot of them close early. Um, between seven and eight, you get a couple customers coming in, get strings, maybe sell a guitar if you're lucky, a couple of things. And then most of what you're doing is just, we used to call it holding down the counter. You hold down the counter literally and just watch students come in and go and say hi and goodbye and take payments if you need to do that. And, uh, there was a record store next to my store <laughs> and, uh, it was a record store where you could trade in records and tapes and stuff like that. So people would just go in and trade in their CDs and tapes and stuff. And, and everyone told us, uh, when, when, <laughs> when we were next to the record store, how great it was, but it really wasn't great. And the reason it wasn't great was because um, some people went in the record store and traded in their CDs and tapes, but if you traded in your CDs and tapes and, and video game stuff, uh, if you're trading, you would walk their store and look for their product. So you got to understand, when somebody went in and sold their uh, DVD collection or their stuff, um, well, they didn't walk their store because they... Uh, they're not going to buy anything. They're waiting for cash. So and it took, it took them about 20, 30 minutes to, to come up with a total for you if you had a bunch of stuff. So they would just come in our store and look around, which is fine. But, I mean, they're not going to buy anything because they're hawking their CDs and tapes. So the reason I tell you that story is because we were used to this is what I'm trying to say. So uh, this, this three people come in. It's a daughter and a mom and a dad. And they're walking around the store. And it's obvious they don't play guitar because they ask me a few questions. And I'm, I'm indulging them. And the questions are definitely of someone who doesn't understand. Like, are these guitars? You know, like, yeah, these are guitars. I'm not joking. Those are the kind of questions. I don't know how old the, the, the girl was. I, I want to say she was preteen. I don't know. Maybe 14. Could be 20. I don't know. You know, right? Uh, my my daughter, uh, she's 16. She looks like she's 12. So I don't know. I don't know. So she's a young girl is what I'm trying to say. And they're looking at the guitars and she goes and I don't know why to this day. Same hangers. I use string swing, by the way, at the store. She picks up an American Strat top rung and she lifts it up and she looks at it. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm just standing there doing my thing. She goes to hang it back up and you can tell for some reason she can't figure out the hanger. I'm not kidding. Like she can't figure it out. Now this happens in seconds, right? You're like, you see her going struggling with, for some reason, not figuring out how to, to hang it on the hanger. Uh, if you guys have string swings, the older ones, you know, that had these rubber grommets that were on there. And so you put it behind the rubber grommets, right? Well, she was putting it in front of the rubber grommets where there's only about a half of inch of space. And so of course it, it, it can't hold it. And she's doing this and the guitar, and right as I'm basically going, like, that's not how you do that, the guitar falls, hits another American Strat, and then smacks into another, I don't know what it was, maybe a made Mexico Telly. Takes a giant chunk out of the headstock of the American, the American Strat, big chunk out of the bottom of the top American Strat, and then of course hits the Telecaster, right? Just bam, 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 just takes everything down as it goes down. Just hor hor horrifying. Now, this is what happens. The parents ran out my door. So I'm standing there, the parents ran out the doors and the girl's staring at me like, I don't know, like, like you stare when you drop three guitars that are, you know, it's like three, four, $3,000 worth of stuff. <laughs> it just fell on the floor. And so, see, I can laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> so she's staring at me and I'm like, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know how to yell at a, a, a girl. I'm not yelling at a kid. I don't know how to, I don't know how to be upset uh, at a child. <laughs> right. So I'm just standing there and I'm like, uh, I, I just walked over and picked him up and she looked at me and I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say, I didn't say like, it's all fine. Cause I'm not saying that, but I'm not saying anything to a teenage girl. And then she leaves because <laughs> her parents are gone. Like, I'm not even sure they were in the parking lot anymore, okay? I'm pretty sure they weren't. They just left her. I'm. By the way, I always just assumed it was their daughter. I'm pretty sure it was. It could have been just a random teenage girl with two, with some adults. I don't know. I don't think so. So anyways, then I had to call and tell my wife, you know, who's obviously a part of the store, and Ralph. And they were like, well, what did you do? Did you call the cops? What did you? And I'm like, no, you can't call the cops. It's an accident. And they go, well, did you tell the parents they had to pay? They ran out the door. And they're like, well, why didn't you chase them? I'm like, no, because, <laughs> because, 
Because as a parent, all I could process, by the way, this is proof. Uh, everybody has, everyone, especially you'll have comments because everyone, everyone is going to in, in a uh, retrospect, have all kinds of theories about what you should do in that situation. I, I want to tell you just the, the, the important part of this. I couldn't process the guitars fell off the wall. All I could process was these two asshole parents just left their teenage kid in my store after she damaged some stuff. Like they left her. L let me, let me be frank. If I was going to beat somebody, it would be for that, but not dropping my guitars just for leaving their kid behind. What a crap dirt ball move. Now here's the interesting thing. It, it, it works out in the end. Uh, the guitars obviously couldn't be fixed. They had big chunks out of them, so they had to be sold for nothing. And um, I'm a smart guy. I called my friends and said, hey, you guys want to... I, good friends. My friend Robert has that one of those strats this day, and he says it's the best strat he owns. And he got a smoking deal. I lost money, of course. I sold everything for below what I paid for it. Um, but I sold it to my friends because that's what you're smart. You do good and friends being good customers too. I just called them up and said, this is what happened. I got to sell guitars at a loss and you're going to get a smoking deal. And, and the, 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 that worked out. <laughs> I lost money. I guess now I have a funny story. By the way, I've never really told that story as a funny story. I've always told it as like a, yeah, people are strange, but Johnny says, were you insured? There is no such thing as that. Stop saying that people, there is no insurance for that. None. It doesn't exist. No business has insurance for that. You have insurance for somebody gets hurt in your store and they try to sue you, <laughs> right? You have insurance for that. Uh, and that has a cap coverage, right? And then you have insurance for theft, theft meaning breaking, entering. By the way, there's no such thing as theft. Like if somebody, uh, somebody grabbed, because the store's been robbed a couple times, right? I've, I've had a gun in, you know, my face. I mean, it's just, you know, it was a business. Um, we had two guys come in the store and they grabbed two, the two most expensive guitars. They grabbed them at the same time and ran out the door and jumped in the car. And um, they put painter's tape over like three of the letters in the license plate. It was like a Honda Civic. And we gave the cop the four letters and the cops are like, yeah, there's 2,600 Honda Civics in the area with those four combinations. So they're basically nothing. There's no insurance for that. You can't call your insurance. You, you call your insurance, they, they, they don't insure that. They'll insure like the store gets broken into and then... That's how it works. Imagine it. <laughs> so that's just how it works. That's how insurance. Plus, not to mention, um, uh, insurance is insurance. In other words, once you make a claim, uh, if the claim isn't huge, it doesn't matter. They're still going to jack up your rates next uh, next policy. So you don't want to you don't want to do that. <laughs> you know you don't want to you don't want to call your insurance company uh, and tell them that you know you got three thousand dollars and you have a thousand dollar deductible, so the insurance company can cut you a two thousand dollar check. And then basically figure out how to make you pay six thousand dollars more next year. So yeah, um, so yeah, there's no insurance like that. That stuff just uh, that stuff's in movies and crap. That stuff doesn't exist. Here's what happens: if you want to be a sane person and own any kind of small business, you really have to look at your quarterly, yearly earnings as a whole and not look at day to day transactions. Because some days you lose money, some days you break even, some days like that, you know, damages happen you know, the end of the year is where you really focus. If you want your sanity, if you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.